Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Sam Fox channel. Today, we're going to be building the high grade Universal Sentry, the R Jaja. The R Jaja's runner, obviously, you all know that it's based on one Bill Fighter's unit, Alo Gaga. Alo Gaga, yes, I think that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, you know, typical Bandai have the runners ready for years, just don't make the mold out, you know? It's a, it's a very typical Bandai thing. I don't even bother to ranting about it or anything like that. But anyway, we got a very rare mobile suit, you know, take you quite a long time to make it come true. But anyway, that's another topic. Today, we're gonna be building the Arrow Jaja. So looking at the side right here, we have the actions and we have the gimmicks, the weapons. So. The gimmicks is pretty good, seems like. Yup. Okay, looking at the other side right here, we can see the uh, information about the R Jaja. You can pause it here if you really want to read it. Okay, now back to the front right here. So I gotta admit that the box art looks really cool though. So now let's unbox it first. All right, now, so let's look at the instruction menu first. Our Jaja, and then we'll flip it to the back. You can see the story of the Our Jaja, and then we have the brief introduction of the weapons down here with the color guide as well. And then now when we flip it open, you can see the, you know, all the instruction. Wow, really? You have to repaint the blight? Okay, fine. Just briefly looking at it. Done. Now let's look at the runners. Starting off with the A runner, we can clearly see the back ways. We can see some legs armor right here, some arm. Uh, this is a side skirt and front skirt. And then we also have the, the storage for the beam saber. The F2 runner for the wings. E2 runner contains the inner frame of the R Chacha and I assume this is the feet, this is the legs, this is the legs and then I don't know what part is it. This is probably the feet as well, this is the, the legs as well. D runner, we can see the gigantic antenna right here, we can see the tubes at the side of the rival, we can see this hand armor right here, feet part and then some part of the legs, I don't know this part. This is the arms, we have the head, and then we also have some arms part right here. A C1 runner contains the beam rival hands option and then some in the frame of the whole MS as well. C2 runner contains the shoulders part and this is the part for the wings. I'm not too sure about these two parts right here. B runner, the legs part, and then we have the shoulders part, we have the wings. Backpack wings, we have the torso right here, and then we also have the head right here, and then I don't know what these two are, and then we also have the torso part right here. F runner, uh, we got the head, we got the torso, we got the front waist, we got the shoulders, and the rest of it, I don't really know which part is which. This is the beam saber. This is the beam saber right here. E1 runner, again, is the inner frame, so, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure which part is which, but, you know, we can tell that this is a waist part, this is possibly the back waist, this is the hands option, this is the head, and then, you know, there's a legs joint, and blah blah blah, I don't even know the rest of it. Lastly, we have the poly caps, we have the stickers right here as well. The stickers, there's a lot this time, so, I mean, this is the, these are small detail stickers, so I assume the color separation is quite good. And then lastly, we have this very thick beam saber right here, wow. Anyway, now, we go through every single runner, Let's jump into the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the R Jaja. So this is the finishing of it. Overall, after finishing the whole thing, that's what you get. And the overall finish is pretty nice. The articulation is pretty nice, except for the arms, because the arms articulation is a bit weird. I'll just try to show you later. And there's a mechanic that I'm not really like about this arm whole thing right here. Uh, which I'll discuss later as well. Overall, the articulation is pretty nice, but you do have to do some recoloring on the legs armor and probably at the side of the feet as well. There's a little bit of recoloring that you need to do. Other than that, that's no big deal. And the overall finish is pretty nice, as I said. Um, this time, there's not much accessory because this is a prototype mobile, so it's written on the box. So usually, prototype don't really have that much weapons. So, you know, that's not much. that's not too much accessory, so it's a very quick and solid kit 
First, let's start looking at the head right here. So this head design will kind of remind you of the YMS15 Digyang design because officially this Arjaja is based on the concept of Digyang, which is used by high rank officers. So that's why it will have a very similar look to Gyang. Right now, what it gave me is just that it's a soldier wearing a helmet. And other than that, there's something that I want to say right here. Um, this mono eye right here is just like the DJ, which is not movable. It's kind of sad though, because I wish they were movable, but fine. I guess it's not possible on the XG. And the black piece right here is stickers. And the movement on the head, honestly, is not really that good because the back of the head is a very large piece right here. So it's kind of interrupting the movement. So the best you can do is possibly near to 90 degrees, possibly, not really, because it's a standard polycap, so moving up and down will be very average. It's not going to be as good as the one who have the initial joint in it. Take a look at the chest right here. The chest color separation is doing a really nice job. Uh, the black piece on the chest right here is all stickers, but that's not a big deal because you know my rules. As long as the stickers stick on the servers, I'm fine with it. Uh, looking at the movement of the chest right here is actually pretty limited and it's not really good for posing because the maximum you can turn is not even 45 degrees. But if we flip it to the back, you can see that the black part right here, of course, you're going to need to recolor. It's pretty simple. Just going to marker it. And then, you know, you can see the big thruster at the back right here. Other than that, there's not much to look about. Next, we're going to look at the arms right here. So first, the arms is a very very poor design joint which is a, so first i have no intention to try to you know ranting about the ball joint what i'm trying to say is this joint right here have a very big design problem so first the joint is really easy to pop out so first 360 is movable and then when you lift up and it will just very easily pop out like seriously whoever designed this joint you didn't think about the you didn't think about the structure of the mobiles before you designed this joint. But anyway, if we're looking at the articulation right here, so first the upper arm movement right here, the maximum you can do is around halfway because the shoulder armor is getting in the way. And then for the bending though, it's pretty nice. It can touch the shoulders, so it's pretty nice. And for the hands option right here, we only have one open hand at the left side and other than that we don't have any kind of hands option right here and you know the whole arm can move to the front but as i said it's really easy to fall out but for the since it's already popped out so i feel like i'll just do this part separately so next you know that we have this suit have something called variable shield so the variable shield is basically you just rotate the shoulder armor to the front and this is the shield so the shield features some movement right here this spot right here is for you to put the beam rifle on the shield and other than that there's some movement on the shield as well you can you know you can slightly move like that you can move like that because it's a big ball joint and at the top at the, at the top right here as well you can move as well like this and i do want to say that for some reason every like all the upper body joint of this garba right here appear to be very sloppy they are very they are very easy to pop out and i just don't know why and other than that i would just say that this variable shield right here i don't think it's fun is you know it's it's really annoying to use i gotta say that so looking at the waist right here so let's look at the movement first so first the front skirt can lift up not really good not really impressive just an average lifting angle and then at the front skirt right here we can see this piece of sticker other black parts right here is just me using the gunner marker to repaint it that's not that's something like very impressive or very difficult and then the side skirt can slightly lift up and then at the other side of the side skirt right here we can see this beam saber rack right here to put into the beam saber rack you need to borrow this you need to borrow this piece right here to clip it into the beam saber rack to take it out and then you can put on the beam saber effect part so it's pretty easy there's not much parts you need to swap around and then turn it to the back right here we can see that this design reminds me of the get a Gugu design and when you turn inside you can see the thrusters inside the back skirt as well let's talk about the legs right here so first let's talk about the parts that you need to recolor first inside the leg right here there's two uh vents right here that you need to repaint it to yellow and then at the side of the feet right here 
if you can see right here, that's a triangle right here. That is a triangle right here that you need to repaint it to yellow as well. That's basically you, what you need to repaint on the legs. Now, looking at the articulation, so first kicking to the front is pretty decent, 90 degrees. Kicking to the back, not really because the back skirt is not moving. And then, you know, side kick um it's not really 90 degrees it's near 90 degrees but not really 90 degrees and then for the bending though uh for the bending is not really that impressive the maximum you can do is like this so you know the bending is not really that impressive on the legs and then for the feet down here you can move around because it's a big ball joint and if you look closely you can see some thrusters at the side of the feet and then also at the tip of the feet right here, you can see some yellow pieces right here. The yellow piece right here is stickers. The last accessory that I can talk about is this beam rival right here. Well, this beam rival is not really that interesting. If you really want me to say something about this beam rival is at least they gave you some color at the side of the rival right here, which is this red piece right here. The scope is obviously going to be a sticker. And then down at the tip right here, we can see this dagger right here. I don't exactly remember the name, so I'll just type it on the screen. And this dagger right here, you can pull this off and then, you know, use it as a separate weapon. Now, this piece right here is for you to put the beam rifle at the back of the shoulders. You can remove it as well if you don't like it. There also movement at the back of the rifle as well. This movement right here is for you to move this piece away when you are putting the beam rifle on the sh shoulders. So let's just do this quickly. Here is a quick FYI for you. Once you put the beam rifle on the hands, then I can tell you that your arm articulation is basically gone because one, this beam rifle for a small scale gunpla, this beam rifle is pretty huge. And two, because the back of the rifle will be keep bumping into the shoulder armor. So that's why basically your arm articulation is gone. All right, guys, this is the end of the R Jaja review. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I think that this scalper is a very good scalper, but I think the biggest fail on this scalper is the shoulder part because the shoulder part really, you know, interrupting the movement first and then secondly, it's really easy to pop out because of that structure right there. So I think that's the only fail on this scalper. But other than that, everything else on this scalper is fine. There's no, there's not much problem about it. So. If you want to buy it, you can still go ahead. It's just you need to you need to be patient about the shoulder parts when you're trying to make some poses. So just be careful and everything will be fine. But I still wish that they can do something to that shoulder. But anyway, this is the end of the review. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like on my videos. Hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next review. Goodbye.